If you're into chaga, like I am, making it for tea, the big problem is what to do when you've got a huge piece of chaga. First of all, let me explain some of the setup here. I've got three rubber pads, although that's just convenient because this is leftover rubber that I had from building a studio and using the rubber as isolation for the uh, never mind. <laughs> Three rubber pads. I've got them under this big pot to prevent any damage to happening to the tile floor because of the heavy impacts from splitting up the chaga. Anything will do, even a piece of wood. Soft wood would be better for obvious reasons because it's more sponge-like to absorb the shock so that you're not going to damage the floor. So I began with a big, huge, uh, um, and the other thing is I'm doing it in a big pot. This is actually a leaky pot, but that's fine. That's what you want to use, a pot that you're willing to damage. The bigger, the better, because when you're hitting the chaga, pieces want to fly. And that's the problem I'm sure that you've run into if you've tried to do this. So do it in a big pot. I started with a big piece and what I'm about to do now is break up some of the pieces that are left from it. I began with a very large axe and I set the axe blade onto this huge piece. Remember, it was very large. So the axe blade was sitting centered on it and then I was hitting the axe with this hammer. Wear ear protection because the noise level will damage your hearing for life. So now I'm going to show you the same process, but instead of a large axe on a huge piece of chaga, I'm using this nice sharp chisel on one of the pieces that broke off. And this is the exact same process. As you can see here in the pot, there's some of the crumbs and bits that are left over from smashing the huge one with the axe. And so now we're going to do exactly the same thing with this chisel. See how easy that was? One, two. It's a lot harder with the first piece. That's why there are so many chunks here, because it takes time to break them up. But when you're dealing with smaller pieces, then just get it centered and do like a diamond cut. A piece just flew out of the pot, a very small piece, something like this. So make sure your floor is clean so that any pieces that fly out are easy to find. As you can see, it's a bit of a time intensive process, but the goal here isn't to get it down to crumbs. It's just to get it down to pieces that are small enough so that they can go into the blender. Because if you put a big piece like this into the blender, you're just going to break your blender. You're going to burn out the motor in a few seconds. So this is basically all you have to do is just keep subdividing until oh, this is a good size here, something like that. This is on the higher end of the size. This is kind of like the maximum you want to go for. And then um, just throw it all into your blender. Not all. Depends on how big your blender is and how big the piece of chaga is that you started with. Don't put too much in the blender because even if it's smaller pieces, you're probably still going to damage the blender. It may not burn out the first time, but if you're doing this regularly, and you're overworking the blender, even if it gets through, you're shortening its life. The motor will burn out. Once you're into this kind of medium sized chunks area, just use your hammer and you can very quickly pulverize what remains. An even bigger pot I probably shouldn't do it while I'm talking. An even bigger pot would be handy so that you can actually get the hammer in there more conveniently. But 